All right, welcome everybody. Just a reminder, uh, if you want to join us for screen sharing, just click on the link in line 20 and enter any name when prompted. Um, we're going to start things off with a quick summer code party update. Uh, ben Simon or Aaron Knight, do you want to start us off? Star 7 to unmute. Hey, sorry, I had the, uh, the old double mute on. Um, I'm well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> um, great. So uh, the, the quick update is that we are uh, well more than halfway to our total event goal um, with 575 total events in the system. That's not to say that half of them are ha we're halfway to our goal of events total happens. This is just things scheduled the other way. Um, looking really good, and our presence in the uh, start page snippet, um, which if you go to Firefox homepage, we're one of the few in rotation there, um, is definitely helping to drive a steady, um, a very real and steady increase in um, numbers of that schedule. Um, and uh, last week there were a couple of awesome um, events. And so I don't know if there's folks on the call from Dundee's on the call or if any of the hot New York folks want to talk about the you know, Tumblr. Um, but there was some, and I know uh, Sunny also had a girls develop at night in uh, San Francisco. I don't know if any of those folks want to chime in with report backs. Does anybody from uh, Hive NYC want to start us off? Blog post line 97. Any Hive NYC folks want to let us know what went down? Um, or how about, I think John from the Dundee event is here. John, do you want to tell us about all the awesome that happened in Dundee? Star 7. John, are you there? Star 7 to unmute. You may be double muted. Anybody from Dundee? Cole is there. <laughs> Cole? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Cole, Lorian? Star 7, John. Hey, this is Leah from Hive New York. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, we looked at the blog post in line 97. Um, yeah. And you guys had about 150 people? We did. We had a we had a really great turnout, um, and we were working in the old uh, house building that wasn't the most like Wi-Fi-y, um, but there were tons and tons of things there. Educator network, um, just a really nice, relaxed vibe. A lot of people we kind of pulled people as they came in um, and asked them kind of how they heard about it and where they were from and. We had a lot of hits on Facebook because we did just put an ad on Facebook, and a lot of people come in um, for a Tumblr thing. So there were a lot of people who just sort of like wanted to trick out their Tumblr page and learn more about that, and then from there moved on to Symbol, and we had um, some great popcorn activity happening, um, and even in the Wi-Fi down as it did many times. We had a lot of backup analog offline stuff for people to do and uh, designing a sport um, with Hive NYC Member Institute of Play. So um, it was just a good event and it had a really nice relaxed um, vibe and the focus was on people of making stuff and um, online or offline and it, there was share out moment, which we a lot of us brief, sort of like how we can work with these pop ups that are a little bit kind of lower key and not um, much about people sharing out in big groups, about people working together and sharing out in a sort of small tight group that they have formed just working over the past, you know, minutes hey, together or something. Yeah. Your your audio is it's just kind of on the verge, but it's kind of breaking up pretty pretty badly. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else from 
a Hive NYC that can just kind of wrap up with maybe a better audio connection? Sorry? Hello, John. Oh, is that John? Sorry, sorry, who's speaking? Sorry, that was that was Cole. My bad. I did, I was still. Oh, hey, Cole. Uh, I, thought, I thought I was muted, but apparently not. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad you're unmuted. Maybe you can tell us a bit about Dundee. Uh, all right. So, um, Laurie and, and I took a road trip from London to Dundee, which was awesome. Um, we. We made it to the hackathon, and I think we were the first ones there. And people started rolling in, and this guy walked in, just like eight-wheeled robot. And I was like, "This is going to be amazing! Like, I don't even know what's going to happen, but, but this is awesome." And so um, we all split up into groups. We took like an hour and sort of just met everyone. Um, and we split up into groups, and I just started hacking our DNS stuff right away. Uh, my particular, the thing that I built was a joystick-controlled Google Street View. Um, so basically, like, took joysticks and put them on our Arduino board, and then piped it through Node to, um, and then through Socket to the client side, and just started controlling Google Street View with uh, joysticks, so you could sort of navigate it. And we actually had a cool idea for Mozilla Festival to actually build a physical arcade game out of this, and like, kind of like, where in the world's Carmen San Diego, but with Google Street View and joysticks. Um, and yeah, there are some other cool stuff that happened too. Um, maybe maybe John can come on and he can talk about some of the other stuff. Sure, John, are you there? Okay. I guess he's still having uh, on meeting. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. It turns out on speakerphone it doesn't work. But if I hold the handset, it works a lot better. So. There you go. Uh, you, you've gone a bit fainter now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, it was great to have uh, Cole and Lorian come along. <coughs> our, our main emphasis was looking at basically how you could make the web and open news more physical. Mm -hmm. And so for, for that reason, um, it was a probably fairly, I don't know whether it was a non-standard hack jam, but there was, uh, we had laser cutters, 3D printer, um, and hacksaws. Um, and lots of materials for uh, people to build with. So they would make code uh, on, on the laptops and then connect that to an Arduino and then house that to make a physical product. And we had everything from kind of Cole's uh, joystick control street view to somebody using a joystick to kind of uh, hover over kind of um, tweets about an event and news to a game that was, uh, and I can put the link up actually here, uh, guys from Imagination Labs in London uh, made this game for spotting the news headlines and it kind of cheered if you were right and it kind of booed if you were wrong and then it was very much a game and that, that was kind of fully working system they got out of it. So it was, it was just a lot, there was about what 40 to 50 of us there um, and people stayed for 36 hours, uh, they went home to sleep for a few hours um, and there was a lot of stuff out of it. There's a link uh, I'm looking even more horrendous than I look in real life, um, which is, uh, if you have a look at the Air Mozilla, uh, let me just put a link up for you guys here. Then from Air Mozilla, I put in this um, hack jam for Dundee. Uh, there we go. I'll just put this link up for you guys here. So if you have a look at that, there's, we basically videoed and, and cast all of the uh, ideas that came out of it, um, which you can oh, have a look through. It cool. takes about half an hour. Um, there, there was a range of stuff, but I think the main take home was really introducing people to the idea that in a short amount of time you can make the web physical. And, uh, and it was a lot of fun and there was a lot of good feedback from people. John, did you say the main takeaway was that in a short period of time you can make the web physical? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you can actually, a lot of people might be thinking that if you want to take, take uh, a, if, so for example, somebody in the first few hours made a physical kind of uh, compass um, that pointed to where tweets were coming from. 
Um, and it was an Arduino connected up to a servo that was reading tweets and kind of calculating if they geotagged it, which, which, which angle they were coming from relative to the room. Um, <coughs> and that took a couple of hours for someone to make. Yep, so I'm looking at how do we document spread replicate this. I think, I think it's hard for people to, I mean, I know you're just talking about like, yeah, it's pointing to where tweets are coming from, but you, we can talk about it all day, but until you actually see it happen, it doesn't sound like it. I mean, it sounds cool, but until you see it, you're like, whoa, that's awesome. Like, that, I had that reaction when I was seeing this thing actually pointing to where tweets were coming from. It was unreal. Like, and I think that's uh, underneath why, why would you make the web physical? I think that thing is that people quite like the magic of seeing something that is a piece of wood moving in response to the internet doing something. And it's yeah, a way of it's, getting people connected. And like navigating around Street View gets really boring with a mouse, but actually doing it with the joystick was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, so, and then we, we started thinking, well, what if that was a, like uh, in an arcade game, like 80s or 90s arcade game style, housing and how would people react to it if it's a kiosk in the street uh, yeah. and we're thinking maybe doing that as a joint thing for Mozilla Festival in November. Awesome. Is it true there was a physical blue bird that flapped its wings every time somebody tweeted Mod Party? Yes there was and it, was, yeah. and it didn't flap it in a mechanical way, it was using um, muscle wire just to gently move the wings so it's like a paper tissue. Um, it could have been origami, but she couldn't get it to, to do that, but yeah. Um, How again, do I get one of those or make one of those? I, I think that's it. amazing. How do I make one for myself? I will send you the link in a minute. I will dig this up and email you guys the uh, link to my student's blog. It's actually quite simple. It's if really simple. If you could paste it so into the pad, that would be great, John. I'm going to let me just, I'm going to have to dig this up and make sure that my student has put a blog post up. Uh, can you give me just um, a few minutes to do this? Cole, you can do some chatting while I look up this. Um, I mean, I, I think that's not it, other than uh, it was a really, it was really great to be in Dundee. Um, it's just a, it was a very interesting crowd. It was interesting um, seeing the, there's a few, there's a journalist professor there. And we, we had a sort of like fireside chat about, about how we can use data and to bring it into the physical world. Um, Instead of just having it on a screen, like we, one thing we talked about is like we get so used to having screens in front of us all the time, and it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to think outside of the screen as a developer. And so it was it was really interesting for me as an engineer to be with uh, as a software engineer to be with like a industrial and product engineers who are actually building physical products and then connecting them to the web. It for me it was something that I'm I'm not used to. And it was really uh, an interesting and, and welcome change to, to hacking the web. Um, yeah. On, on making the web physical, hi, this is Laurian, uh, in the same room it's called today. Uh, on making the web physical, the actual, the Twitter compass was, was amazing in the aspect that, no, we can see tweets on maps on all the time on various tools. But now you can see that pointing in one direction and then rotating and pointing towards you, but actually you know, behind you, and actually you, you, you see that you are, you are in the middle of all the things happening around you, and not on the screen. It, it's a very strange feeling that to realize that no, there are no screens anymore, and you are just sitting there, and things are happening around you. Yeah, it's, I, it was very, very cool to, to start to bring things outside of the screen. I, I, it, it's, I'm actually like kind of addicted to it now, and I'm like, I'm like browsing all these different Arduino parts and like ordering them sitting over my place so I can build all this stuff. Because it, before, um, before this hackathon, I had never programmed an Arduino. And, and this sort of like opened up my, my eyes to the world of physical hacking, and it was it's absolutely, it's so exciting and a lot of fun to build. It's, uh, it's really cool. And so, guys, I'm, I'm going to have to shoot soon because I've, uh, I've got my family chasing me down. Um, so, and I sort of said that to Dan. Uh, but what the next thing for us to do, really, is to... We'll really, one of the big things we were talking about is bringing this to Mozilla Festival so that, basically, if we can start sharing this and kind of showing people how easy it is, so bringing a similar kit and the similar people and um, uh, the Mozilla Festivals in London um, on the 9th of November this year. And so picking up with people there. 
That sounds awesome. Yeah. I think there's like a huge amount of support for that. I mean, it's funny at the at the Moz Toronto Moz Party event, we were really thinking about exactly how we do more of this kind of crossover. Like there was physical hacking and there was web hacking, and we were really thinking, man, it'd be great if we could put those two things together. And it sounds like that's exactly what you guys just spent the Dundee event doing. There was a few really good resources in Dundee too, who like knew all the answers to all the Arduino problems and were very, very good at explaining them. If it wouldn't have been for um, a couple of those guys, I, w I would have probably not have been able to build what I built in such a fast time. Um, so I think what is key to, to having a physical hack day is somebody who really knows their shit and who can really help people get past the hurdle of, of understanding what's going on. Because um, without that, it's just going to be kind of a, a mess. Yeah, I think that's really important because uh, I have been to hack events where people have just been kind of milling around. And I think getting people building really, really quickly is really important. So just plug an Arduino in, make something light up, and then connect your Arduino to Twitter and make something move. And do that, you know, within an hour or so of, of kind of when starting to build stuff. Yeah, um, and, it's, and you can't, it's, it's uh, I mean, I was, I was on a, I remember John Reese gave a talk once, and he was talking about sort of the level of entry uh, to, to different frameworks. And what made jQuery so successful was the fact that the documentation was amazing. And it, it, it happens if you're trying to learn something and you get frustrated in the very beginning, then you're very likely to just say, I'm done, and move on to something else. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks so much, guys. And there's lots of requests for pictures of the uh, eight-wheeled robot um, and a general request for as, as many links. And, um, yeah, I've, I've got it because it finished late on Friday um, and then had a lot of family stuff over the weekend. I've got to do a wrap-up blog post, and I'll put a load of links in. Um, if people kind of do a track back on uh, mods, hash mods party, they will see stacks of photos coming up. Um, from Thursday and Friday. Very cool. Thanks so much, John. Great. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't join in longer. Um, see you, John. Uh, great. And good to see you. speak to you again, Cole, and everyone else. And uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye. bye. Very cool. Thanks. For anybody uh, from Hive NYC that wants to just kind of wrap up the uh, report back that we have started, there's photos in line 123. Can you hear me? I don't know. Skype will yeah. unmute properly. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Wow. The Skype is fixed on that. Um, this is Chris. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit scattergorical because I'm um, in Greece and I'm exhausted. Um, but it was um, just to follow up on what Leah was saying. Um, it really seemed very manageable, even at you know anywhere from 100 to 150 participants at any one time, which was very exciting. Um, it was really interesting to see the diversity of folks that came. Um, that one really great turnout from our own members and constituencies within Hive NYC, but that our message was starting to penetrate into other uh, communities, and we had folks that were coming there that had no connection to Hive, which for us was a big win. Um, it was great because we had a lot of the educators and facilitators within Hive that had been sort of curious about the webmaker stuff really start to engage deeply both themselves and their youth in the various projects. For instance, Tribeca Film Institute um, educator brought a handful of their teen filmmakers who, you know, through the course of the day started to put in a gun violence video that they've been creating into popcorn and um, had put popcorn elements into about the first three or four minutes of their video by the end of the day. Um, had a really great moment. Um, this would be the last little anecdote, um, and then we can pass it off in, to the uh, rest of the meeting. But, um, a woman who runs, who has been very involved in zine culture, especially around um, women and people of color, um, really took this opportunity to come because she wanted to to talk to the Tumblr folks and actually build her tum uh, a Tumblr blog about the zine culture, which she was able to produce in the afternoon and then spoke about it to the public um, in the share out session. And we're hoping to get some video back from Downtown Community Television who filmed it. So once we have it, we'll share it if, if it was captured. But it was, she was probably about, I'd say about 24 years old. And she was able to articulate the sort of art combined with putting your stuff on the web and integrating the skills to build on the web. 
um, completely prompted and not really from our community. And she sort of gave us um, the webmaker narrative back to us and, and really kind of a, a moment that was pretty transcendent. It really kind of crystallized a lot of the stuff for me. Hear, actually hearing someone give back the interest base, their passion, um, work with broader impact, and integrating the digital skills, and then being very thankful that the, the Summer Code Party event, the pop-up, was the exact kind of experience that she needs all of that stuff further. Um, and felt very gratified for herself and, and really acknowledged the event and the tools were the thing that we should have. So hopefully we pop on the video. We're going to get that, all the raw footage, and the first thing we'll do is put a zero in right on that. And although it might not be of greatest quality because it's a dark room, uh, as soon as we're able to isolate that, we will, we will share it out. Very cool. Chris, I, got, I have a question for you about, um, like in some of the photos, it looks like you're using these really cool like storyboarding templates uh, sure. oh. for, for, for popcorn with like, you know, kind of a mix of paper prototyping and storyboarding. Could you say more about those and whether we can share those as a resource? Sure. So let me um, take a half step back and say that one of our members, People's Production House, which is a youth video and social justice organization who's really gravitated towards popcorn, um, over about the last six months, and they've created something, basically a team of youth popcorn facilitators, uh, design, you know, filmmakers and designers themselves, um, called the Pop Squad. And this is the second or third time that we've used the Pop Squad in these kinds of events. Um, and so what they did as a team was, I sort of said we're probably going to need some paper prototyping things to sort of, because if we didn't have enough computers or the Wi-Fi, we had pre-thought that those, some of those things could be potential problems given the size of the RSVP list. So they, as a team, came together with those, paper, you know, kind of based on the robot and then also some new narratives, just sort of put those out and then put those same prompts that Popcorn will ask into the paper. Um, and so youth and teens were just, that was sort of how they were conceptually understanding Popcorn. And then some of them um, would move into actually trying to re replicate that within Popcorn. Um, and so we call it, they called it Paper Popcorn, and they, they had a bunch of those pre-made templates and you know, using you know, Sharpies and cut and paste and construction paper, we're able to, to push that out. Um, and so I think that's kind of an exciting end around to tech issues. Also, I think it's just a great scaffolding for the use of popcorn. And um, I think that the Pop Squad sort of teen uh, popcorn maker idea is, is something that we're excited about in Hive NYC. And then sort of as you know, when able to produce those kinds of things and think, have teams drive how best to begin to interact conceptually with the tool. Um, just sort of really excited about those two things in tandem. And yes, they're, they're more than willing to share out those templates that they've already produced, some that are sort of cheeky and some that have sort of um, kind of a political or activist vibe, and yeah, they're help, happy to share those out. The other kind of interesting one that we did um, that came out of our work with Hackasaurus all year with an after school organization in New York City was um, Decode the Code, which is basically um, Dictionary with code, so we tell people to read the string of code and then draw, the, draw whatever the code is telling you to do, and then you can turn that in for prizes or whatever. So that was another sort of fun paper prototyping activity that we had sort of pre-baked in knowing, just hoping that it didn't happen, but knowing that there would be some technology glitches and we didn't want it to bring the, the party to a screeching halt. Very cool. Any final questions for Chris before we push ahead? Okay, I'm going on mute. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That's awesome. Um, and just really quickly, I'm just looking at the San Francisco event. Um, I don't know. Does anybody want to give us just a just a really quick recap before we move on? Sunny, were you, were you there? Hi, everybody. It's Sunny. Hey, Sunny. Hello. Um, so the San Francisco office hosted um, the Girl Develop It Hack Night event. If you guys aren't familiar with Girl Develop It, it's a really cool meetup um, with the intent of promoting teaching women how to code in a very safe environment. Um, I've put up a couple links there. Um, they have chapters in a lot of places beyond San Francisco. Um, it was a hack in which 
to be useful to some of the newbies there. Um, it was received really positively from some of the super newbies. They've heard of it a lot more in a bit, um, kind of like a mirror path that um, Code Academy provides because Thimble provides project based options. Um, it's available. You get to things right away in the dual pane. Um, so we got some really good feedback. It was a lot of fun, super casual. We hosted at the San Francisco Moss Base. Um, the San Francisco office um, and about 20 in attendance. So um, hopefully we can have more of these um, look forward. Cool. And I'll keep mine super short. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. Thanks, everybody. And if you have Thanks. any other any other links you wanna you wanna add there, um, we can in include them into a post. I think Rebecca and I are gonna do on this. Um, turning all this stuff into a, a sort of report back. So, if you have any more stuff you want to add, check it into the pad there. I have a question, yep. Matt. Is if people uh, have one of the things I noticed is the Tumblr doesn't have as much stuff from this weekend as last weekend. If people want to get things to us uh, for the Tumblr or otherwise, what should they do? Yeah, I mean, so I think step one is included in this, this pad. Rebecca will be working on. Um, uh, on updating the Tumblr based on all of this stuff. But the other thing is we filed a bug to make some changes to Tumblr so that it will be easier for people to submit content directly. Um, so I don't know, Rebecca, maybe you can, if you can dig out that Lighthouse ticket and just paste it into the um, Etherpad for folks who are interested. But yeah, that is the goal, is trying to get to a place where it's easier for people to submit directly to the Tumblr. Oh, it already exists through the magic of Etherpad. All right, so people Very are cool. using that. So can you can can you guys just include that link uh, in the pad? Uh, how to submit? Hello. To Hello. Hello. My name is Faisal Aziz. I'm a Remo from India. Oh, hi, great. We're actually we're going to do a whole item on um, Moz Party India in about five minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Great. And there's instructions on how to submit to Tumblr, I believe, in line 179. Rebecca and Dan, please uh, correct that if I'm wrong. Uh, well, let's push ahead. Um, so you probably saw this, this post from uh, Mark yesterday, Tools for Webmakers. The, links, the link is in line 187. Um, Mark, do you want to take five minutes to kind of this up? Sure. Um, what I'd like to do is next week have a discussion on where we're going with our Webmaker Tools um, and hopefully have some online discussion before then. But what I had done in this post was just a little bit of a mid-year review now that we've launched Symbol and we've launched a significant version of Popcorn. Um, a mid-year review on where we are with the Webmaker Tool strategy as well as some thoughts on where we might go in the future. And really the mid-year review is just to say, um, you know, other than I think everybody's happy we have Symbol and Popcorn out there, what the thinking behind them was. And in particular, I think it may not be clear to the whole world, um, I wanted to explain to people the idea that this making and learning concept is really embedded into the design. And that that's what, uh, in our thinking, differentiates a lot of what we've done with Symbol and Popcorn from other things which are out there uh, is that you start, you come in, you get a template or you get a web page or a video that you can make with and remix right from the beginning as opposed to having to learn a lot of abstract concepts. And so that's a good place, I hope, to point people uh, if they've got questions about why Mozilla is doing what it's doing. But I think the more interesting uh, piece of this, um, and actually there's a section in there that says building a foundation which is the the first section, it, it talks about that making and learning approach. But the, the piece I'm hopefully, uh, I'm more excited about in here is the second and third sections of this uh, quite long pose. One is uh, talking about what do we do next. In particular, uh, you know, what features do we build next or what work do we do next to really get a community involved with these tools. And so, if we want people to contribute symbol templates or if we want people to actually be code contributors to, to Popcorn and so on, uh, what do we actually need to start doing now and what do we need to start building now to do that? Because in my opinion, that is the number one job that we all have right now is we've got 
something exciting out the door. Uh, we've got a lot of excited, even new people on this phone call, which I'm, I'm very impressed with and grateful for. But I don't think we're good yet at helping new people come in the door and get involved in these things that we've just put out. So I've, I raised some questions in there on that topic. Um, but I'm really much more interested in people's ideas on what to do or just starting to do things that bring community into these projects and most importantly make it easy to onboard people into these projects from the community. So that's the second part that's in there and really that's one of the things I'd like to start a discussion on next week. And maybe we might even make that just the discussion next week. And then there's a third part which is where are these going long term and, and it's one simple version of it is how do we start doing real programming with things like Thimble and, um, and Popcorn. Although I think you know, there is a lot of real programming and just making anything for the web. Uh, and I think everybody has an a agreement on that. At some point in the foreseeable future, we need to get to teaching JavaScript or teaching things that are more appy or game-like uh, in what we're teaching. There are other people out there already doing that. And so uh, what I lay out in there is uh, certainly a strong feeling on my part that Mozilla needs to move into that realm as a part of Mozilla WebMaker. But I think we need to do it by testing out some of our own ideas this year and also testing out what other people are doing in that space. Um, so that's probably an, a, a third and or separate conversation on this call uh, about how we move into teaching real programming uh, a few weeks down the line. So that's what I set up there. Um, feel free if you've got reactions to any of that. In fact, feel more than free. Feel encouraged um, to go and just comment on that post. Uh, I also started a thread in the new WebMaker mailing list to get conversation going on this topic. Um, so I just want to put that out as a flag um, and as a preamble to next week we'll dig into that community topic, which includes also you know, how can we use badges as a way to motivate and recognize contributions in what we're doing. And then I'll take Matt's advice to, to decide when to go into that third topic on this call of, uh, of teaching programming. We probably want to do that separate from the community conversation. Very cool. So any quick questions there? Like Mark said, we'll uh, circle back and dive into that second piece you mentioned, the build a community piece next week. But any, any quick questions on that in the meantime? Uh, question number two. Oh, um, so there's one question about where the product roadmaps for these various tools that Mark's been talking about live. There's um, people are filling in links there with a link to come for Thimble. Um, and I think that the reason, the one thing to say um, is we're in the process of updating all these roadmaps this week and over the next coming weeks. And so you'll get report back on that on these calls and in the news group or in the mailing list. Um, but um, you know, one reason to think about the big picture is it will help us shape the product roadmap. Cool. Two other questions. I don't know, Mark, if we can take these up briefly now or if we should just uh, rack them to next week. But um, question line 215. Introducing people to real programming tends to take longer. Um, up to now, most of our emphasis has been on very short events and experiences that help people go get started very quickly. Will teaching real programming mean that we need to reinvent our uh, event formats or how we think about events? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, I think what I, I think we're trying a lot of different things right now. Um, you know, some things I would say is. Many people are organizing like follow-on events from the Summer Code Party stuff they've already done, and so that is because even with the simple stuff we're doing right now, there's clearly an appetite for going deeper. And so uh, I think that's what the community uh, is already kind of trying to figure out: is you know how do we link, you know, do an event one week, come back the next week, or come back in a month. Um, and I think we can look a lot to the Coder Dojo people who we want to work with, um, who have started to kind of create those repeating events. So I think that's one uh, answer to it. And the other is, uh, you know, I think different people are going to want to put different amounts of time into learning stuff. Some people will come just because they want to figure out how to make a thing, uh, and other people will want to go on a longer kind of path. Cool. So maybe people can continue just sort of 
uh, asking questions and doing some more chatting in the past bring all of that back uh, next week for much longer discussion. Yep. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'll go through this section of the pad to frame the discussion next week. I might even do a follow-up post at least in the mailing list. Um, but yeah, throw that stuff in there and we'll have a longer discussion next week and certainly come with, I think in particular, thoughts on how we do the community engagement uh, piece of it um, over the next three months is something we're really looking for um, for people's ideas about. Great. Um, let's, let's push ahead. Um, we invited some uh, members of the Webmaker community from India to join us today to do a bit of an in-depth report back, in part because we were really inspired by um, just the quality of the report back that SIAC did. There's a link to it on line 228 um, with some sort of highlights and key takeaways um, underneath it in the pad. But um, SIAC, are, are you there? Are you able to unmute star seven? I know, there, I know there's others from um, who wanted to speak on this item as well. Feel free to speak up. Let us know if you're Mostly what, what we wanted to ask the members of the sort of Webmaker India community is just what they learned, what they feel like they learned from the series of very successful events they posted, and what can this group do to help support the Webmaker community in India. So I don't know if and there's anybody who wants to speak up and share some thoughts on that? Sayak, are you there? He was here earlier. No? Um, Maybe we'll circle back. If folks can try and provide some tech support, if Sayak's having audio issues. Oh, so this call just got disconnected. Let's, let's circle back to this one um, and pass over to Andrew, who is going to demo some new uh, functionality on maker.org slash events. Andrew, are you there? I believe so. Andrew. Hello. Hey, one second. Do uh, you want to go ahead and share your desktop? There you go. We can see that. Tell see us that. what we're looking at. Um, so as per what's written in the etherpad, which I can't now see, obviously, um, the, the first thing we've done is, is tidied up how the functionality works um, so it's a lot more obvious um, when you get to the search page what you can actually search on beforehand. It wasn't very clear. Um, so a lot of the results aren't returned now. So if you search for something that isn't a city or a country, you won't get any results. Um, so that, that just helps a lot in terms of people's expectations. Um, we've also included a link to view all of the upcoming in the system so that you can basically just browse your way around and not have to have a location in mind. It's just a lot more apparent um, what is going on. It's an immediate sort of ready access. You can just sort of sit there and, and see all the different events that are happening, which is So Andrew, you just, to do that, you just, click, you just click on Show All Events on the initial screen? So the little link here, which you may or may not be able to see, uh, I've already opened it to think, but um, clicking on that link uh, will take you to this page, um, which basically gives you events that are happening everywhere in the world that are in the system. Um, so you can immediately see um, what's happening, how many events are happening, um, and not, if you're just more interested in what's going on rather than what's happening near you, for example, you can just sit down and have a look and work your way through them. Um, the biggest change I think we've got is a search on countries. So if you type in United States, for example, then you will get the country, um, and that will take you to a page that looks a bit like that. Um, we've been widening this for quite a long time, so hopefully this will go some way to uh, answering that question. Um, 
we haven't yet got down to a global level. Um, we need some further discussion on that, I think. Um, but this at least gives you a good idea of what's happening at a more general level where you are. So you don't, you're not sort of limited to the 50 months around you or whatever it is we've got set. But you can see um, all the events that are happening around your country, um, and it's just a lot more obvious uh, what's going on. I think that's that's the main bit that are the new and of interest to people. There are a few other bits and pieces, but mostly technical improvements that probably aren't worth discussing at this point in time. Um, so questions for Andrew? Let's see, I'm just looking at the pad. Hello? Hi, Hello. Is that Hi, I'm Faisal Aziz, uh, Rima from India. Oh, okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I want to ask, uh, actually, I just joined the conversation. Uh, I want to ask uh, why that uh, publish version button is not working while publishing the X ray remixes. Uh, I'm sorry. I so, so, we had to take that away, Mark here, um, for security reasons uh, briefly because we just, we, previously there weren't that many people using the X ray goggles. Uh, and so we hadn't taken quite a close look at the security issues. And when we looked at it uh, more closely, there was a bit of a security issue with allowing people to continue to publish. So it is something that is in the plans to go back and fix, um, although I'm not sure if there's anybody on the call who knows, uh, who can talk a little bit more about what the timing is. But if there, if there isn't, we can come back with an answer to that when that publish functionality is going to come back. Um, you know, on the next call. Okay, something uh, alternative solution for that problem. I mean, uh, do we have something alternate? Because uh, the summer code part is it is the main thing that uh, uh, students feel comfortable to publish it. Uh, now I know that it's a security issue, but uh, we can do something like uh, uh, providing source to some other third party or the local content that will help us to see their remixes locally or something else like that? Yeah, do, are there people, I, I don't know if there's either people who have got a suggestion on an alternative or are there people who have come up with an alternative to the, the publish button in the short term? So it's possible, this is Carla, it's possible to actually take a screenshot and that's the workaround. And I think that um, up until a few months ago or even relatively more recently than that, there was no publish function, so essentially we're reverting back to what was there originally. But um, you can take a screenshot to set the publish function is temporarily disabled. Hey, this is Dan. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, what about instead of a publish button, a send to Fimble button? Right? Fimble's already cleared uh, security, so couldn't we just uh, have you send your hacked X ray goggles thing into the Fimble editor? The problem is there's lot, most of the pages that you're going to want to hack that are popular have got stuff that Thimble would strip out. Uh -huh. So your, your, fa your hacked Facebook page would not look much like Facebook by the time it got sent through Thimble. No. Got it. Yeah. But anyways, it is, it, thanks for bringing it up because I think it's good to have the discussions about this stuff. and. Um, it, it highlights that we probably didn't communicate clearly enough about why we did it, uh, and it certainly is a priority to, to get it fixed. So this is exactly the right place to raise issues like that. Thank you. And I'll just maybe leave it on you, Matt, to make sure we get back to people on that in this call. Okay. Uh, yeah, folks can just continue helping to document the answer under line 262. And then maybe we can surface this more publicly than we have because it, it has come up a few times. Um, so let's see. Um, Andrew, thank you for the demo of the new event functionality. It looks like people are discussing next steps. Everybody loves the new improvements um, and are discussing next steps around global event view and whether that's still required and if so, what we want. Um, 
I don't know if we want to circle back to the uh, mod party item. I don't know if folks have been able to sort out their audio issues. Sayak is back. Sayak, are you there? <laughs> Sounds like no. Um, let's let's keep drawing in the in the background uh, and push ahead to. I think we have. Let's see, next up is Malcolm with a quick update on web made games go mobile. Malcolm, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Mine is real quick and fast. It's more of a uh, a pitch, real quick. Um, I was out at the E3 and I was talking to different people about web making, and I ran across this small company called Ludi, and they can pretty much convert any CSS, Java, HTML into mobile uh, apps. And being that I have like more of a gamer background, I thought it was you know slight spread. So, you know, having a hybrid app, you know, I was really thinking about the stuff that I showed the kids, you know, dealing with hackathons and showing stuff that I worked with the kids dealing with popcorn. And by all being based on um, Java pretty much and some CSS, it's like, you know what, this I think will be a great fit. So uh, I talked to their head coder and everything, and next week I would like to have some type of a proof of concept. So I was thinking about using Browser Quest, you know, since I don't hear anything else about it. It was like an awesome experiment that you guys did, and you know, if we can make that into like an edible level that you know students can sit there and put in links to their their, their favorite spots, we can actually bring up you know stuff dealing with uh, social justice. Browser Quest has a lot of potential that I think that we can really dive into, definitely in the gaming aspect. And on the same side, if they want to learn more about what they could do to expound on it, it will kind of promote and push them or nudge to learn more code. You know, because we're constantly showing them code, we're teasing them with code. So now we have an app, and everybody loves apps. And so next week, I want to see if we can get Browser Quest up and running uh, as a standalone and on the iPad as well as um, iPod. You know, not using the internet, but then after that, you know, we move forward to see if we can get some of the other stuff running in there. Cool. Thanks for the pitch, Malcolm. If you want to leave instructions for folks who want to get more involved in the in the pad there, um, and maybe you can just continue the discussion there. Um, there's a link to Lude.com there, but if you want to leave some other stuff on how people can get involved, that'd be great. Awesome. Will do. Right. And maybe uh, Malcolm, you might want to take a look at something that our, one of our colleagues, Pomax, did on uh, on hackable games. He demoed some of that last week uh, at a uh, on Air Mozilla. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Pomax owners, you want to po post that in the Etherpad right where Malcolm was. Uh, but that's something in addition to browser quest that you could go and play with a little bit, Malcolm. And and I think Pomax would and all of us would love. If you're actually showing it to people, like to get the feedback and how do people react to it? Nice, will do. All right, I am going to try. So I'm going to try unmuting. Or sorry, yeah, unmuting all lines. One sec. The conference has been unmuted. All lines are live now, so we're going to ask folks if you could mute yourself if you're not talking, or just try to keep the background right down. Sayak, is that working for you? So, Hello. 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 We can hear you. So, um, I think um, somebody's having a phone conversation in the background. If you could maybe just mute your. Uh, I'm trying to. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thanks, Rick. Thank you for persevering. I have some kind of a connection issue, so I'm going to join. Okay. Uh, we actually. Uh, had a wonderful party in uh, 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 so I'm sorry, I'm going to mute all lines again. The conference has been muted. 
I'm sorry, my friend. This is not our day. Um, can we circle back and try this again next week? You and I can get on the call 15 minutes ahead of time and try and sort through the various technical issues. And we will put you first up on the agenda for next week. I apologize for all the technical snafus. Um, let's push ahead to our last item, a story, quick story camp update. I think we have uh, Jeremy here from Northampton Community TV who is going to give us a bit of a, a recap. Uh, Jeremy, are you there? Star seven on mute. Paging Jeremy. Star hey, seven. this is Jacob. Can you guys hear me? Hi, Jacob. Hey, how's it going? And is that Jeremy? Hello. That's Sayek. Can you hear uh, me? I am Faisal Aziz. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, Sayek. Oh, you're there. Okay, Hi. you made it. Let's, let's, let's yes, go. Yes, Sayek, Sayek. Uh, actually, I am Faisal. Uh, okay. I think uh, Sayek uh, got some uh, connection problem with him. Yeah. So I'll give some uh, uh, views about that uh, most party we have in India. Great. Uh, actually, the most party was really awesome event at here, and uh, you know, Pune, the city is going uh, series by series. Uh, most party events after the most connect, and then most party at the Symbiosis College, and now we are focusing on the most best Pune at Alana Institute of Management Science. Uh, the party was really awesome, and uh, uh, we have learned uh, so many things like about the web. And we have a very good team out there, like uh, Rajesh Ranjan, Aman Alam, and Soumya Deb, uh, Sayak, and there's so many people out there working and planning for the party, and it had made a great success. And the uh, session was really awesome because, uh, and we have also joined uh, with uh, Kinshuk Sunil. He's a remo from uh, Delhi, and he's presented so charmingly. The audience almost forgot they had to. At the lunch, and uh, the event uh, goes uh, started with the uh, introduction by me. That is uh, how to use Mozilla Firefox like boss. So I have given some basic tips regarding the Firefox usage because there are so many functionalities in the Firefox that we don't know about, like the panorama, grouping tab, and there's so many features out there. I used all these features to the uh, to the audience, and they really enjoyed that thing. And after me, uh, that uh, Ankit also told about the usage of the FOSS community and how Mozilla uh, playing a great role in the FOSS community. Then the Somya Deb, uh, basically known as the developer, work uh, explains the DNS protocols, domain, subdomains, and anatomy of URLs, and there's so many things out there. And uh, after that, Rajesh Ranjan Amanalam talked about how Mozilla localization, Alton, and work. And uh, after that, we have a very great uh, uh, hands-on on the summer code party. We have used Thimble and uh, that X-ray goggles. And uh, Saik led the charge. And uh, he done a very great job, Saik. Uh, hats off to you. And uh, really enjoyed the event right out there. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll do the same for the most fast Pune. And uh, Pune will rock like uh, ever. And we'll do the great job like as ever in the most fast Pune also. Thank you. Hey, hey guys. Hi. Uh, Sayak here. Finally got in. <laughs> OK, finally <laughs> you got in. You take the charge, Sayak. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank, uh, thanks Faisal for the intro and everything. And uh, uh, thanks again for saying good things about me as well as my event. Uh, well, I uh, wanted to start in uh, a bit uh, by telling about the event. Uh, well, we have already done that. Uh, we are, uh, what I initially had in mind when uh, we started all this thread uh, was that we wanted to create a series of uh, events. We would uh, be hosting a number of small scale events to large scale events throughout the city so that uh, it, there would be small small at least uh, groups of five to six people minimum 
uh, modular groups in each and every college of Pune so that everyone could actually know what uh, the initiatives are being taken by Mozilla. Especially I myself like uh, the idea of open badges very much. And uh, so if it could be used, uh, like uh, if everyone knew what open badges were, then maybe uh, we could very uh, soon have some kind of an admission criteria or something which can be based on uh, open badges itself. So some kind of uh, such things plus uh, maybe uh, teaching people about web making stuff, thimble and uh, x-ray goggles, those are really great tools. And uh, I, during the last event, I found out that uh, people uh, reacted, uh, they were exceptionally happy uh, when they found a tool like thimble where they could uh, directly uh, modify some kind of code about which uh, they did not know much before and do great stuff. They could create their own pages. They could publish those pages and they could even share those pages. And uh, uh, there were some people who actually embedded uh, direct uh, videos from YouTube and they created some kind of environmental uh, messages uh, which they could share with others. Uh, so these are actually great, uh, really great opportunities uh, for these people. Uh, but, uh, the opportunities are really endless and we are trying to expand uh, um, our group as much as possible in uh, Pune itself. Uh, after Pune, we plan to do the same for uh, some other cities throughout India. Uh, there are already a large number of uh, reps in India and uh, we have the largest number of uh, remos uh, present in Pune itself. So that's a great help for us as well. Uh, so what basically uh, we are trying to do right now is as far as uh, web making and uh, Mozilla Summer Code Party is concerned is that we want to uh, host regular events, uh, events every weekend. So what uh, we have in mind uh, currently is that we just had a meetup uh, this Saturday. Next Saturday we are going to have MOSFET Pune, which is by the way not the MOSFET London. It's nowhere near that, but we uh, want to do something like that. So this is uh, basically it, and I think we are out of time. Uh, so that's basically it, and we just want to con continue the work that we are doing. So, anybody having doubts and questions? That's, that's great. Thank you, Sai. Um, I know that uh, Carla and some others have some uh, questions for you around um, badges and getting some more input from you on what you think would be most helpful there. Um, and we've been trying to take notes of um, you know the, the, the various items you mentioned. Uh, over the course of the call, so maybe if you can just um, answer some of those those questions under line 257, um, and we can circle back and uh, make sure we're we're doing everything we can to to support your future event. Okay, thank sure. you, thank you so much for struggling through all the technical difficulties. Okay, it's okay. Thanks a lot. That takes us to the end of the hour, everybody. I. Jeremy, huge apologies. I'm sorry that we uh, we ran out of time. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can coax you to come back next week. Um, apologies for all the technical difficulties. Um, but yeah, we're kind of out of time. I guess just really quickly, we could take an extra ten minutes, or we could take an extra ten minutes. I guess if we want to. If Jeremy, that's for Jeremy. Jeremy, are you okay with that? Yep. We're fine to, to stay longer if you are. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Oh, awesome. Cool. So let's see, we're on line 333 of the pad, and Jeremy's got a bunch of links under line 344. Um, Jeremy, you want to take us through those? Yeah, sure. Um, is it, so is there a way to share my screen, or is it automatic? Do you guys do that automatically? Sure, let me just see. I just have just a few links to go to. Is that working for you? Um, I, 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 I can't see mine, but uh, I'll just go through everything real quick. So uh, my name is Jeremy, and I work at Northampton Community Television, which is a community television station in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, and recently we partnered with uh, Mozilla uh, to, and other stations and uh, media centers uh, for Popcorn Story Camp. Popcorn Story Camp is a... Uh, is a workshop for youth to get them introduced to popcorn and uh, kind of remixing and remaking videos online. 
uh, I listed a couple of the benefits. Uh, you can see some of the links uh, I provided. Um, there uh, we have some videos that we made uh, as well as some of the, the actual published videos that the kids made. Um, I think that the, the benefits of, of these of, uh, of a partnership like this, uh, and I highlighted them down there, an introduction to youth to our studio. So it's, it's a win-win. We both introduce uh, some uh, young minds, some young creative minds to uh, the not only popcorn, which they can work at home, and, and kind of put their finishing touches on at home, but it also gets them physically into the station to show what we offer. So it's, it's a kind of great symbiotic relationship we have there. Um, it gives them also a brief introduction to editing. So we, uh, we have here both Final Cut 7, Final Cut uh, Pro 10, and we also have Adobe Premiere, which are kind of pretty intensive editing programs. But to have them understand the premise of a timeline and adding tracks and adding media uh, it, it helps to then uh, go the next step, which is to the professional editing softwares, uh, and helps them also understand some of the softwares that they have, um, iMovie or Movie Maker, uh, a little better. Uh, the other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm definitely digging uh, with this is that the speakers are talking about kind of critical issues and, uh, and explaining some of the politics behind uh, kind of uh, Internet uh, legislation and, and freedom for in the digital age, uh, and it's we we kind of cover it topically, but it's kind of inspiring them to ask questions, and it's intriguing. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, a lot of the individuals, um, while you know they kind of totally rely on these, this technology and the internet for communications and uh, uh, and you know, doing doing everything that they're they're doing, they they know relatively little about how it works or how it operates and what kind of some of those threats are. So it's at, it's so it's so important that these speakers are uh, addressing these issues and we're getting and we're uh, we're at least touching, we're providing that uh, that initial education to to these kids. Um, also, the great thing about these videos is that uh, what I love is that there's instant gratification. You bring in these videos, you, you remix them, and once you hit publish, you have that link available, ready uh, to share with your friends on Facebook, to, to, to tweet out, um, and it's, it's really great to see the, the kids react uh, instantly to that stuff when uh, video editing can take, can be a daunting process and exporting can take a long time. That instant gratification is so important for, uh, for spurring that interest. Um, it allows us to add input into the conversation, so we have kind of this agenda that we follow, but we'll also kind of go off the agenda a little bit um, and uh, teach to our, to our own needs or our own, the, the own interests. For instance, last week, uh, I covered a little bit of the uh, the basics of kind of networking 101, and I was surprised to find you know that the uh, uh, that some of these kids uh, didn't exactly know how they got their internet or what an internet service provider was, or um, so it's a great education tool for other things that we can that that we may want to touch upon as well. Um, and the the last thing here, um, it allows us to raise the bar for community and media. Uh, I think that for 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 being in this uh, field for several years now, I, I think that one of the the main hindrances to uh, community media is being stuck in kind of this idea that we are exclusively television, and that's just not the case anymore. Technology has expanded to allow us to do uh, these live conferences and uh, to really, uh, you know, an infinite amount of possibilities as as to what we can accomplish and achieve. And television at, at this point, it's, it's one of, it's, it's actually taking a back seat to a certain extent uh, when we start, uh, you know, navigating or gravitating towards uh, putting our media online and, and, and representing ourselves on, on, uh, via the Internet. So I think that it's, it's an, an excellent partnership and it's a great introduction for all of this stuff and I look forward to uh, the next, uh, the upcoming weeks. Cool. And Jeremy, is there a particular popcorn template that uh, kids have found to be like the most popular? I think that the very first week, um, in the very first week, it was uh, it was nice um, that because we uh, 
it was the robots one, and I, I don't know if you guys can actually see my screen, but I can also send uh, a link as well. But uh, it was not only, it, it, it actually really caught them off guard. Uh, we showed them the Arcade Fire video. Um, I'm forgetting the, uh, the name of the song right now, but it's where you put in your coordinates, and it will actually bring up Google Maps uh, with some uh, other media as well. Um, and it's just a whole level of inter interaction that they weren't familiar with, which then we produced. Um, it was uh, not only uh, taking, uh, taking some search searches from Flickr and embedding them into our video. It was taking Google Maps. It was taking a whole bunch of different things that really t tailored it to their specific interests and <coughs> also created a little bit more intimacy with, with the viewer. Um, and they really, they really took to that one, um, and uh, we had a lot. We had a, several more faces the next week as a result. Very cool. Any final questions cool. for Jeremy? You were saying that some kids signed up because of what their peers had done. Is that is that what you yeah, meant absolutely. by new faces? So the, yeah. The, the other important component here is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the the uh, the workshop as an outreach. So what we've been doing is we've creating we've been creating blog posts, tweeting, uh, having them take their links and if they so choose, put them on Facebook, show them showing individuals what they can uh, accomplish, what is being produced from here. And we've got a slew of calls uh, because as a result they've seen they've seen these blog posts, they've seen what is going on here, and they're they're intrigued and they want to they want to start coming. That's awesome. That, that's that's great to hear that it's actually helping you uh, get more people in the door. It's that's gratifying. Yeah, definitely. Any final questions before we sign off? Sounds like no. Jeremy, thanks for the great report back, um, and thanks for your patience as well. Uh, and thanks to everybody for going 10 minutes into overtime, special edition of the Webmaker Call. We'll talk to you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand by.